Welcome back. Matt and Zach still in the house. It is crunch time here on The Jump. Cleveland.com reporting the Cavs will hold an in-person workout with Obi Toppin. They hold the number five pick. ESPN.com currently has Toppin as the sixth ranked prospect in the draft, but he's played a date in Matt. Would he be a good fit for the Cavs with the number five pick? Home ties, but that's a lot of pressure. You know, last time they picked someone from out that way, who he was and what he's still <laughs> doing. So, uh, you know, solid pick for them, obviously, but he's going to have big shoes to fill. They need talent that's anything but a small guard. They got the small guard thing done with Colin Sexton and so Darius many. Garland. I just, we're, 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 gonna, we're in misdirection information season. There's going to be a lot of rumblings. All we got is time for rumors and rumblings. The top of the draft is going to be super interesting. This is why, again, maybe move the draft like seven to ten days earlier. Just saying. Anyway, all right, guys, let's move on to Gordon Hayward. We don't know if he will pick up his $34 million player Ooh. option. Hasn't stopped the trade rumors. Ian Begley has reported the Pacers are interested in acquiring Hayward from the Celtics. No word on where Boston sits on that. Hayward is from, of course, Indiana. Played his college ball at Butler in Indianapolis. But, hmm, plot twist under his current coach in Boston. So, you know, where did those ties go? Zach, does Hayward make sense for the Pacers? I think he makes a lot of sense. He's a great shooter. He can play make. I think they need a little bit more perimeter playmaking. But mechanically, his path there, if Indiana's interest is real, is a little bit complicated and requires some cooperation from Boston. So we'll see what actually happens. But I do think he would fit there very well. And there are deals to make that make some sense for both teams. Uh, first and foremost, he better pick up that player option. <laughs> uh, that $34 million might not come back around again. Um, but I think it's a good fit as well. Um, you know, People forget how quickly, how talented he was. He was the number one player on a very good uh, uh, jazz team before he got hurt. Now it's, with all due respect, possibly the fourth option on the Utah team. I think we'll regain some of the old Gordon if he's able you to kind of... the Celtics? Sk yes, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I think we'll uh, see some of the old Gordon if he's able to step into maybe that second leading score and some nights the, the leading score um, if he's able to go to Indiana. I will say this for Boston, though. They missed him when he was hurt Definitely. in the bubble. And you could see in the series Absolutely. where he came back, he was not anywhere. I don't think he would have been playing if that wasn't a make-or-break playoff series for them. And no without way. him being 100%, they didn't win. Yep. So I do think he's an essential ingredient for them. We'll have to see how essential and what they might get for him if they decide to move him. All right, today is a significant NBA anniversary. On this date in 2012, the Thunder traded James Harden to the Rockets in a package that netted the draft pick, which became Steven Adams. Now, Harden has, of course, gone on to win an MVP, make eight straight All-Star games, and win each of the last three scoring titles with Houston. So, Zach, that begs the question, what if Oklahoma City never traded Harden to the Rockets on the last year of his rookie deal? Why are we doing this to Thunder fans? This is just mean. It's mean. <laughs> I do think there would have come a time when all three of them when one of those three, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, or Harden, would have said, you know what, I'm ready for a bigger role, the kind of role James has had in Houston. I do think, though, if they kept it together a few more years, obviously it increases their chances of winning a ring. They may get one. That first season is instructive, right? They were a great team. I think they won 60-something games that year. Russ gets hurt in the first round. Their season is over. If James is still there just for that one more year, yeah. you can withstand that injury to Russ and maybe keep on going. It's not crazy to say that they would have definitely been in the finals and even won a championship. Um, but like Zach said, long term, um, we wouldn't have seen the potential from all three of these guys under the same right. roof. Uh, so eventually someone was going to have to break free. I think they cut the court a little sooner than they should have because you think they're coming right off a of finals uh, appearance uh, versus Miami, uh, a very young, talented core team with not just three good superstars, but they had a nice complement of players around them as well. So I definitely think they could have won a championship or even two. Um, but long term, they wouldn't have all been able to stay at this, on the same team. Right, but even if it hadn't been for the next 10 years, you do think of those next oh, absolutely. few years there. Absolutely. Zach, do you feel like that's one of those sort of alternate universe type things that if they had stayed together, it would have dominoed into a lot of other things being different around the league? Well, I, I do. Th I, I think one of them leaves at some point, but you just you just wonder, like, if they win a championship, you know, what does that do to the Durant decision a few years later? Mm -hmm. But I, I do think they would have come apart at some point. But yeah, I mean, this is one of the seismic moves in sports in the last 20 or 25 years. I don't think there's any question about that. It changes the entire fabric of the NBA. First of all, hats off to management because, I mean, that was through drafting. 
You know what I mean? They great. did a great job building that team. Like I said, I think they cut it a little too short. And then knowing all these guys' games now and personalities now, how long could they have really have lasted? Was there something there that possibly prompted them to change, you know, trade James early on? So there's too much unknown, but they definitely would have been playing um, into June back then. <laughs> <laughs> um, if they would have kept that team together. It really is amazing drafting, and some of those same key players are, of course, still at the helm in Oklahoma City, where they will have the opportunity to do all kinds of new drafting <laughs> because they own, I think, everybody in the league's picks for the next 10 years. So uh, it's good. They're just going to be going after themselves over and over again. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.